Hello, my name is Michelle Benegas. I'm going to be presenting Bricks, Mortar, and Buildings, a metaphor for understanding academic language. I created this presentation with Amy Stoppelstead. An eighth grade student named Maya said, school is where you go to learn a secret language, but they don't tell you that it's there. You have to figure it out on your own. It's like an initiation to a secret club. We know that a lot of our students feel this way. And this is why we think it's so critical that academic language be taught explicitly throughout the school day. Jeff Weirs defines academic language as the set of words, grammar, and organizational strategies used to describe complex ideas, higher order thinking processes, and abstract concepts. So what makes language sound academic? In everyday language, we use shorter and incomplete sentences. And in academic language, we use longer and more complex sentences. In everyday language, we use actions through verbs, like cut down trees. And in academic language, we make actions into nouns to build concepts, like deforestation. In everyday language, we use more active voice, like how much pizza do they eat? And in academic language, we use more passive voice how much pizza was eaten. In everyday language, we use shorter noun phrases like healthy food. And in academic language, we use longer noun phrases like improving the nutritional quality of foods offered from other sources. All students are academic language learners. We know that explicit attention to academic language throughout the day greatly benefits our English learners and there are existing opportunity gaps for this population. However, explicit attention to academic language benefits everyone. So this is a good practice, whether you have English learners in your class or not. Now let's move on to the bricks, mortar, and buildings paradigm. The analogy of bricks, mortar, and buildings shows how academic language is constructed. This may be familiar to you, Dutcher and Moran originally introduced the bricks and mortar framework. The first level is bricks. Bricks are the vocabulary specific to the content and concepts taught in a discipline or a content area. Brick words tend to be found in glossaries and boldface print in the content area textbooks. We often find them on word walls. Bricks are taught at the word level. The word level is made up of phonology, how words sound, semantics, what words mean, and morphology, parts of words. Some examples of, of bricks would be in science, volcano, tsunami, earthquake. In math, addition, subtraction, multiplication. In social studies, amendment, constitution, and in language arts, omniscient, alliteration. You can see that these words clearly belong to particular content areas. So what happens if you only teach bricks? I think all of us have academic experiences with memorizing long lists of vocabulary words, only to pass a quiz on those very vocabulary words, but not to be able to use them in sentences or in speech. This is the problem with only teaching vocabulary is that language doesn't become something that students can use inside or outside of the classroom. The next level is mortar. Mortar words and phrases are the general utility vocabulary required for constructing sentences and paragraphs to engage in discussions using academic English. Mortar is taught at the sentence level. The sentence level consists of syntax or how words fit together. Syntax is also known as grammar or structure or form. Syntax is very difficult. So some examples of mortar would be, for example, connecting words. Like, for example, however, although, whereas. They could be phrases with prepositions. Think about, improve on, in addition to. They could be comparatives like greater than, less than, equal to, or as big as. It's not as important here that you know the linguistic jargon, that you're able to say, you know, prepositions or participles or articles. 
it's more important that you're able to identify how words are similar, how they operate similarly. For the example, the first example is a good one, connecting words, right? Use whatever term makes the most sense to you to identify a family of words. So what happens if you only teach mortar? Well, my personal experience with this was unfortunately in a world language classroom where I memorized lots and lots of verb conjugations. I could say, I study, you study, he studies, we study, they study. But if I had to turn and talk to a classmate of mine, or if I had to talk to someone in a real life situation, I wouldn't have been able to use that verb or that conjugation. I only knew it within the context of that grammar lesson. So we know that it's not enough to only teach grammar or to only teach mortar. The last level that we're going to be looking at is buildings. When you put the bricks and mortar together into longer texts, you get a building. Buildings are taught at the discourse level. In linguistics, discourse refers to a unit of language longer than a sentence. The discourse level consists of text type and pragmatics. Pragmatics refers to knowing how and when to use different types of text. So some examples of buildings in science might be a lab report. In math might be the structure of a math problem or the structure of a math proof, maybe an oral report of how a problem is solved. In social studies, it might be a formal debate, a history report, a news article. And in language arts, it could be a letter, a narrative, a screenplay, or an autobiography. These are all text types that are commonly found in these particular disciplines. And it's critical that we not assume that students know what these text types look like and how to build these text types. Rather, that we offer explicit instruction and examples so that they know how to do it. Students utilize language to construct edifices. See how we did that? You'll notice so many of these different buildings um, had people thinking of different things when they were putting together the bricks and putting together the mortar. They thought about their end goal. They thought about, were, were they trying to build a home? Were they trying to build a library? Were they trying to build a castle? And that's exactly what we hope that our students have in mind when they're building text types, that they're choosing words and they're choosing sentence forms that are relevant to those text types so they can truly talk like historians, talk like biologists talk like or write like poets. Putting it all together. If we take a look at the left-hand column of bricks, we have a selection of text from the Minnesota Comprehensive Exam um, about bats. And in this text, we have bolded all of the brick level words that might be considered for explicit instruction. We have words like bats, feathers, fur, mammals, and wings. Pretty typical vocabulary lesson. In the next category, we look at mortar. So we've isolated some of the syntax or sentence level items that could be more difficult for students. Like even though, instead, not, either, although. And in the last category, the building level or the discourse level, we don't identify individual words or phrases, but you will notice a lot of features that stand out for this text type. First of all, how it's organized. It's organized in paragraphs. We also noted, notice that we're using sequence words um, and that we're using transitions. This is unique to this particular text type. That is all for today's presentation. We hope that you enjoyed it and learned from it. There will be another one on its way about writing academic language objectives. So a warm thanks from me, Michelle Benegas, and Amy Stoppelstad.